microRNAs control gene expression. And we know that certain microRNAs are upregulated in cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. What is presented today is basically an anti-MIR, um, a so-called anti-MIR 155, because MIR 155 is upregulated. Um, this was developed um, to specifically treat cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, uh, which is, um, MIR-155 is highly expressed compared to eczema and psoriasis. Um, and, um, the trial that was presented today shows um, two parts. Part one or part A were patients who were treated intralesionally, so one lesion treated. And there were different concentrations, but 75 microgram was for the intralesional um, injection. So six patients were included. And uh, the part B of this trial were patients who were treated then subcutaneously or intravenously. And the doses ranged uh, from this part from 300 to 900 milligrams. 300, 600, and 900 milligrams. Uh, about 20 nine patients were included uh, in, in this um, systemic application. Among those, 26 patients have received um, at least uh, a, a, a response, uh, at least a stable disease to partial response. No complete responses yet, however, very close. It appears that the IV infusion is superior to the subcutaneous administration. Uh, the study was later also amended uh, to allow IV bolus. It appears, however, that with IV bolus injections, patients may have more side effects, such as feeling nausea or a little dizzy. And it's probably because the drug reaches quite quickly into the bloodstream plasma concentrations. So the interesting part is that there's no differences between the dosing. So we assume that we are already at the uh, superior dose level with 300 milligrams. Um, and in terms of toxicities and side effects, what we see is well tolerated. Um, the most common side effects on patients were injection side reactions, neutropenia, um, and pruritus. Um, very um, rare, only two uh, grade three and four events um, were noted, and this was um, two patients with pruritus and two patients with neutropenia. So nausea, vomiting, this is really very limited in patients and mostly occurred really in patients with the bolus injection. So it appears that the patients with the IV infusion have the best responses. And it appears also that patients who are continued on treatment and have more than six treatments, and treatments over time and over months, meaning the duration of treatment, um, correlates with the improvement of um, or the skin lesions. Um, we usually assess uh, the skin burden by a score that's called MSWOT. And we measure exactly every lesion and exactly the percentage of the body surface area. The subcutaneous injection works well too, however, has a challenge with higher dosing. A higher dosing requires a higher volume, and patients require up to four injections um, per week, which is quite a lot, and so the IV dosing, I think, is the most amenable to all patients. What we know from early um, uh, correlative studies, looking into biopsies that were treated, um, and looking into gene expression, it shows, uh, compared to untreated, that it's just the opposite. So genes that are on, they're off with treatment, and genes that are uh, off, they are on. Most um, genes have not been analyzed yet, but a few pathways have been looked at. And so it appears that with the treatment of um, MRG106 or Antagomir, um, blocks STAT pathways as well as NF-kappa B pathways.